Right, wine and wisdom. <laughs> ho, 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 all you mofos. I'm joined by an awesome guest, a three-timer, and one of my besties ever. This is Melissa. It's good to see you again. Is this three or four? This is three. No, wait, is this four? I think this is three. Was that your first guest or your second? You were my second guest, and then we did it again. Was Darth Jim your first one? He was. Okay. Um, this is the third. This is the third. But this is the last episode of this year. And like I and like Aww. I and like I tell all of my students. Last one, best one. Save the best for last. Yeah, last one, best one. <laughs> so, I brought Melissa cuz she is the best. And just to peel back the onion a little bit. We've already been talking for almost 2 hours. What? <laughs> before we jumped on because, you know, you know, life stuff. Uh, so we're going to basically be kind of mid-stride, right? Just pick up where we're we just going to pick up where we're off. But I will say this. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you leave a review all over social media or wherever you find your podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Leave a review. Subscribe. Drop a like. All that fun, fancy shit. Thanks for watching and listening. Now, back to the show. So... um <laughs> We, it's, it's interesting. We've we've been talking about all kinds of stuff, but the main topic that we want to broach is uh, kind of ego deconstruction, uh, enlightenment. Which I don't even really like that word, anyways. But uh, when you've had an experience of kind of internal validity, internal intuitive peace, how does one reassemble how does one re Ooh, I re like that. how does one rejoin back in to society reassemble. That's a good one. how does one go from the top of the mountain d down and in back into the village Ooh, <laughs> cheers cheers That's oh nice. by the way let's remind me this is wine and wisdom but i'm not drinking and she's not drinking <laughs> i'm not drinking because last night uh was christmas and uh, we'll just say I was naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I had too much sangria. Yeah, sangria is really tasty. And, mm -hmm. and it, sne it sneaks up on you guys. Yes, it does. So, um, yeah, so no wine. But, hey, look, we have a wine glass just to prove that. Lemon water. There Cheers. you go. There you go. And if you want, you can hold up your lo logo to the. Oh, I think I've. I've well, we're going to do it again. You know what? We might have new, new listeners Yogadan. here. There you go. A little closer. Let's. Hopefully the zoom, the uh, focus, yeah, whatever. The Yoga Den. Check it out, guys. If you're in the greater uh, Akron area, it is the number one spot for yoga. Yogadenohio.com. Booyakasha. <laughs> Check them out. All right. Shameless plug. All right. But no, um, let's speak of ego. <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's talk about um, kind of your journey here, Mel. I'm not going to call you Mel. I hate that. <laughs> and you don't want me to call you that. Um, okay. But no, um, let's, uh, so let me ask you this. Why did, why did you figure like this was a, a topic that you wanted to talk about? Probably because it's um, something I'm in the thick of versus uh, my coping mechanism of being perfect all the time and needing yeah. to have all the knowledge. It's something I'm in the right. thick of now versus I'm humbled by the experience versus me feeling like, well, I already know this, so I have something to share. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. It, you know what? Like it, it, it's interesting. Uh, thinking about, I, I was actually thinking about this not that long ago, just the ego in general and how, uh, what, what's the saying that like you have to become somebody in order to become nobody? So like you have to develop, obviously. That's Ram Dass. Yeah. He it, talks about not doing psychedelics until you're somebody. <laughs> right. Well, because he also says when we're born, we go into somebody training. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so true. Mm -hmm. Like, think about this, everyone. Like, think about, just think about, you know, whatever. You don't have to call it the ego, but that thing that keeps you alive, mm -hmm. that has needs, mm -hmm. that has desires, uh, that need, that need, if you didn't have it, you wouldn't live. Right, you would, and if you look at some of these, like whatever you want to call them, realized beings that have 
essentially transcended the ego. That's why they, because we, before this, we were talking about powers, you know, cities and all, and all kinds of things. You know, that some of these beings that have these great powers, it's because they don't have an ego attachment mm-hmm. to this plane so they can do all these things. But it's interesting when it comes to the ego, how it, because our, our society worships it it's everything it's ego centered it's ego centric yeah and it's everything and you know you it's so interesting coming from this perspective of like no it's actually not but societally that's all we're, we're told to worship that you have to become somebody important melissa mm-hmm. you have to make money you have to be successful that's what the society isn't that what it's all about? I feel like that's ego led. Yeah. Have, are you familiar with Terrence McKenna? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I heard him say that. Um, he said, "I didn't transcend my ego. We became partners. We became yeah. teammates." And yeah. To me, that feels like it just felt true in my bones because mm-hmm. I think not only is our culture ego led, but it's also ego shaming. Yeah. So for me, yeah, and the word is misused a lot. And you ask the psychologist who knows everything, they'll tell you that you're using it wrong. But right, for me, it's a it's a necessity to befriend, not to um, view it in a way that has a negative, like something a bad thing, like oh yeah, because yeah. with ego comes desire. Um, uh, yeah. With ego comes he needs Mm -hmm. and if you're used to you know setting yourself aside and your needs aside you tend to like to line up with the belief that the ego needs to be um killed subjugated the ego must die yeah ego death in the spiritual community that's a huge thing yeah the ego death death. of the ego right it isn't an ego death it's the death of an idea of what you think it is and it's the death Mm -hmm. of um i guess a concept that you hold about yourself it's hard it's hard to conceptualize because it's more of a happening, I guess. Yeah. But I like I think I got a lot of truth out of him saying that he didn't transcend it, that they became teammates and partners. And to me, that's like the yin yang of mm-hmm. all yin yangs is you see the light with the dark and you don't judge it. Yeah. Because there are ways that light that shedding light on things can be harmful. Yeah, and we are in that, especially in the spiritual community, in that love and light trap, that you know we bypass the things that are dark, and they're actually fruitful. There's hidden talents in the dark. There's all kinds of things that we've suppressed about ourselves. It isn't such when people in the spiritual community talk about the dark night of the soul, like it's yeah. this horrific thing, right? Or the tower card in the tarot, right? Everything has to fall apart to come together. Transformation comes from ruin. It's like a dreaded thing, if that makes sense. But it's also the most beautiful thing. It is, but to partner with it or become teammates with it, to me, seems like such a Mm -hmm. unifying concept. And it takes away the fear of the process. Because I think a lot of people are afraid of, you know, what that might mean to challenge themselves and their own beliefs. Mm -hmm. Hit a wall, a complete wall of cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're never going to, like... I shouldn't say never, but uh, dealing in absolutes. But the ego is is like you can do uh, all these amazing things and think you transcend it, and then you know Turns it, out the ego it, is it goes just it down. goes right back behind, <laughs> it goes to, it goes behind your back caption you know on the shoulder and goes that was a good one like, <laughs> all right now let's get back to the you have yeah to be okay with the game yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah 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 it's it's so it's so interesting. Um, but um so we were we were mentioning before <clears throat> earlier is how once you've had this these experiences and now it's like okay like you said how do i kind of reintegrate into society into committed relationships what does that look like what does that dynamic look like once i've done all this work so i guess like speak on kind of where you're at with that Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> I know it's it's a lot. Where but, would you like me to start? Uh, well, start with um, like how I don't know how 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 any very 
noticeable changes, I guess. Just anything that jumps off the top of your head in general that you notice in yourself or even and how you view like how your inter I should uh, how your inter how you're interfacing with life differently if that makes sense. It does. It takes me a minute to process things these days. Now time for a commercial break. <laughs> no, it's, it's not so quick to jump to respond. And and nobody should be. Nobody should be caught in so heavy in the reactivity to rush it. I, I love when people are like silent and they, you can tell that they're chewing on that. Mm -hmm. So take, take time. I mean, I, well, I think that's a great, a great question because active listening has been, it's yeah for me has been a work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And dealing with probably feeling inadequate and thinking I should have an answer right away. Right. But, but there are, but there's so many facets to that question of I know. facing with life. I think, I'd say in a broad sense, yeah. if I were to answer that in a broad sense, it would be um, there's more of an underlying element of faith versus fear now, mm. which changes every bit of interfacing. Yeah. So I still, I still have, I definitely still have um, jumping to internal reactions to things, like jumping to suspicion and jumping to how this affects me. But there's so much of a broad yeah. gap yeah, yeah, yeah. of taking that apart and responding versus obviously versus reacting. Responding versus reacting is their very beginning because you're trying to manage yourself. Yeah. And then you start to deconstruct the beliefs behind that. And then you start to, to understand it. Mm -hmm. You start to understand all, I guess you and I have talked about like onion peeling, peeling back layers <laughs> yeah. of things. There's always another layer when you think you've gotten to the oh. center. There's n you're not like that. What is it? The everlasting gobstopper. Yeah. <laughs> There's you're never going to get to the center. But now though, when they're presented to me, I'm like, yes, instead of being More, like, just like, right. Fuck another one. I thought I had this shit figured out. Yeah. There's that's like, not so yeah. much anymore. Now yeah. it's more like, Oh, what am I learning from it's, this? Well, this is it's this is interesting. Sometimes I'm not that excited about it. <laughs> other times, other times I'm like, well, this just pulled me out of the monotony of mm -hmm. this little spot I was stuck in right now. Mm -hmm. But as far as interfacing with life, I think yeah. right now for me, and it's been this way since I was a kid because for me, being imaginative as a child was how I coped. Mm -hmm. with, <laughs> yeah, with with um being ignored yeah so just being like lost in my imagination is how i've always you know managed to go day to day but also having this underlying really knowing that life to me i've always just kind of had this whimsical attitude mm -hmm. and i love it i don't yeah. want to change it yeah so there's been some like occurrences in my life that have cause that to be a little rainy and dark right right i haven't right. always responded from that place but lately i have and the majority of my life i have but i feel like i'm tapping more into that but more with a grounded sensibility of what it means to live day to day on and and survive i guess yeah that makes sense complete and for me that never fared me well in finances or mm, managing yeah. organizing yeah. my life in a right. way that you know where i'm thinking about my security in the yeah. future because to me it's all a joke right <laughs> you know what i mean absolutely so i'm just like how do i function with that and then i start to now now finally internally i understand the value of a routine and right discipline as a method to even but when yeah. you start that from there it right. never works right you can't create that internally mm -hmm. by doing the things outside so now i'm like super grateful to feel this internal you know i know what's good for me in a sense like i'm in like but i i need to like keep the fire stoked not blazing right because the blaze makes me overshoot mm -hmm. and think I can accomplish like insane amount of things in a year, let alone a day. Cause today I need to do the dishes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know you can relate Absolutely. to that. I'm just like, for me thinking about what jobs to apply for, I'm taking my real estate exam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the, the thing that I don't want to lose is the sense of wonder of how, how how amazing life can be and to shoot for that but be okay with the dishes like yeah you know with real estate the sky's the limit you know I can have anything do anything I want mm-hmm. but that doesn't really mean a lot to right. me right but you know teaching yoga at Norton Middle School where I've had the opportunity to work with kids that are dealing with trauma at home means a fuck ton. Yeah. And I don't get paid for that. Right. So, but but being at a place in my life where I feel like I can manage all of it at once is huge. It's, it's a great it's a great thing. And I know you can relate to oh, that too. Oh, yeah. Where I feel superhuman. Yeah. But understand my physical limitations not bust up my body trying to go past them and do the things every day. And when they look the same every day, it used to be like a soul killer to me. Yeah. And now I understand. Yeah. That it, that there's a reason those things work. The formulas work. That's right. But unless you're in a place where um, you understand it, it won't be sustainable. Yeah. That's why diets don't work. And Exactly. Well, you have to find the joy in it. Yeah. I think that's yes. the key is finding the joy and it just feels so healthy. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Finding the joy in doing the dishes. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually yeah. look forward to it now. Yeah. It's so quiet. Yeah. And methodical. It's like yeah. a meditation. Yeah, and that comes, you know, like from that comes from I don't do them every day though. <laughs> I so if I don't I do for four miles if I don't do mine every day, oh my I get flies. Like I don't know. It'll be like <laughs> I was doing well until my daughter moved back in with me. Oh, yeah. I was doing them every day, and now yeah. I've been thrown off again. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, a new, it's not a test, but it's like a, right? new, a new thing. It's a new level. or a new, I don't even like that, but it's yeah. just a new thing. But it, it's interesting when you come from a place where it's like you view something as simple as doing the dishes or something as profound as you know um, a really intense meditation or... Um, you know, being with somebody who's grieving or whatever, whatever, whatever it is, when you come to a place where you view all of those as like just another method to get to God, it's such a liberating thing, such a freeing thing when something as simple as like scrubbing, you know, caked on protein powder on a on a protein shaker yeah because trust me guys if you've ever it's left a pain. The if little you've, metal ball yeah if you've ever left like if you've never washed out your protein shaker and you leave it <laughs> in your car like i did for in the middle of the summer Ooh, that smells nice. for like a week and then you know like you know me i have to i'm not just gonna wash that thing out i have to open it up and go first Right, I'm still, Survey I'm still, yeah, I'm still like an eight-year-old boy who's like, "What's it smell like? <laughs> ah! Why did I do that?" But I had to, anyways. <laughs> just like when I had to figure out, I had to figure out what happens when you put a coat hanger in an outlet. I mean, I needed to know when I was four years old. I needed to know what happens when you put a coat hanger in an outlet. It's that curiosity. I don't know how I'm still alive, but that's another story. Back to what I was saying is that when you understand that all of your life drama and man as humans we love the drama we love the melodrama so much yeah but like it's like we need to have it so the life stuff the life stuff when you view all of your life stuff as just means to get you to become one to become to come to god to become free whatever what have you it's like it, it takes because I used to personally hate the mundane like oh, I hate like dishes I hate oh my god I gotta do this and that it's like I want to get to the exciting stuff I want to be like kicking people in the head I want to be lifting weights I want to be teaching people helping them I want that stuff like yeah that's what's gonna you know which it is which it does it's great and I love it but then when when <clears throat> you flip that lens that channel and that's all of a sudden now you view something as simple as doing the dishes or chopping wood or carrying water or whatever and you view it at at the same level as that other stuff mm-hmm. you know it how can life not be that you're squeezing out all the juice out of it out of something 
<clears throat> and to me, that's like, that to me has been the biggest difference is that's how I interface with things. And also having a sense of levity and realizing it's all, it's all fucked up shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's all like, not that serious, but it is. Well, I think I, I, I hear what you're saying and I, I know exactly, like I know exactly that turning point when things flip for you and yeah. you're no longer like chasing the exciting stuff. Yeah. But for me, where I'm at now and why I brought this up to you prior is work worth doing. Yes. Yes. There's work yeah. to be done. Oh, yes, I, for but, sure. But I'm no longer in a place where I want to make some giant impact on the world. Mm -hmm. I want to go where I'm needed to do work worth doing. Mm -hmm. But I've even deconstructed that. I yeah. wondered what that's coming, where that's coming from. Yeah. Why I'm not like, you know, putting my energy towards making a ton of money to have ultimate freedom to do whatever I want in the world. Yeah. Like which one's the why? Right why is that happening? Yeah. I'll tell you, I know why it isn't for me. Because I don't do well without purpose and meaning. Yeah. I've come to Likewise. that conclusion. Yeah. I've already done that. Where knowing that I could, you know, manifest this mm -hmm. ultra free rich life. And I feel like I've already done that. Mm -hmm. Some other time I've done that. Because if I hadn't, and that was like the ultimate desire right now, I wouldn't be able to stop thinking mm. about it. And the thing that I can't stop thinking about is like meeting life where it meets me, right. the things that I've been through, what does that mean to me and what do I have to offer? It's a balance. It's not about like, um, it's a balance of give and take, I suppose, and taking your own experiences, sharing them as your quote unquote gift, your yeah. place, your place, your yeah. one, you know, you're the one stream of consciousness, your own unique place so for me it, the topic of like getting back into the society is waiting for that thing that work worth doing I'm there I'm so ready for a routine and structure so I've been working on the physical aspects for myself making sure I shower mm -hmm. you know making sure I get this much exercise each day right making sure I'm taking care of my mind yeah making sure those things yeah. have to line up mm-hmm so the other things meet you. But I guess I guess those things are happening now more as a natural occurrence versus me thinking if I do these things, these things will happen. Got it. Now it's just where I'm at. You're meeting it. Like this is where I'm yeah. at now. So I'm I'm not concerned. I, I think there is a part of me that's afraid of taking the wrong job or like yeah. there's a right thing. So yeah. I'm still like letting that kink work itself out that there's some specific thing I should be doing mm -hmm. that's meant to be because I don't think that matters Yeah. because I could get a job at, you know, children's hospital or a school and make the same difference. Yeah. If that makes sense. Uh, complete. I, and, and you know, I think it's also a balance too, because I like to think in, in, in just in, I guess, a comparison of my life to like other people's life. I, I would say I have a very segmented routine life. What it, do you mean by segmented? Oh, well, I should, I, I should, well maybe not segmented. I have uh, structured. Um, so like I eat the same thing every day. Are you chicken and rice? No, I eat, I'll tell you, I had, I had. You have eggs. So, <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what I eat. The same thing every day. And I'll talk about why it, everything's out of balance so like i eat um uh, the same meal three times a day and then the like so breakfast is different but every meal is the same I eat the same exact thing i have white rice i have my sprouts that i grow and then i have like either it'll be chicken or beef whatever i'm kind of in the mood for and it's all same thing <clears throat> breakfast same thing i have cream of rice I have I make the same uh, greens shake in the morning. I have berries, and then uh, before bed, usually I have some eggs, rice cakes, yada yada. Right, I I eat that essentially like Monday through or Sunday through uh, Friday or whatever. Here's what I'm getting to, and it's the same thing with my life. Like <clears throat> I make sure I, I'm working out. Like I have to do this this day. 
I have to like do some martial arts training, do this, this day. I have to make sure I meditate. I do this, right? you know. So it's very segmented. And it's, and I, and I, that's why a really good friend of mine who was in the, he was an army ranger. He told me, he's like, Matt, you would like, why were you not a soldier? Like you would be the perfect soldier. And uh, so I, so I, I like the routine is like, uh, for a lot of that stuff. But then I'll have uh, usually one day a week where it's like, it's a chaos, but in a good way, like Is organized like worship day, right? <laughs> the <laughs> day of creation. Yeah. Right. But it's, so it's like, <laughs> but my point is, I don't know what I'm going to eat. I'm going to have some fun with, it. I try to follow, you know, within certain macronutrients, whatever. But the point is, I know what works for me. Mm-hmm. And I know after trial and error and listening into myself and being self-aware, like this is what works for me. I need to have like 90% structure mm-hmm. and that 10% of wild, mm-hmm. that 10% of play. That's probably a pretty good ratio. Yeah. Anything, I found that anything more than that is just like too outside of my bounds, too outside of my boundaries with certain things. The 10%. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's, again, that's what's worked for me. So I guess the that's point. interesting to me, your ratio. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if that makes, I don't know what my whole point was why I brought that up, but it seems like you're finding the joy in the routine because I, in, in knowing you, I remember I having very vivid discussions with you about this. I said, you're a fucking gypsy. Like, I don't know. Like, you don't even know where you're going to be tomorrow. Like what's, <laughs> it wouldn't be surprised if I got a text from Melissa saying, Hey, uh, Matt, I'm out in Utah. Like I'm just hanging out here for <laughs> like, what the fuck? Why are you in Utah? Like, well, this is where I'm at. So, and then, that's kind of extreme, yeah, but, your but, point, but, point but the point, point is yes. like, I don't, cause I don't know how many different like iterations of Melissa I've seen. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it's a beautiful thing because guess what guys? We're constantly manifesting. We're constantly growing, right? What is the Heraclitus quote that you can't step in the same river twice? It's funny that you say that because I think a, a large part of my inability to uh, uh, stay grounded has mm-hmm. been um, like just such an ever evolving belief system. Maybe because yeah. there was a lot to deconstruct me. Right. But I feel like I was afraid to stand behind anything because mm. I felt like. To me, it seems narrow-minded to stand so firmly behind one thing. And it, to me, yeah. I always felt trapped by yeah. doing the same thing every day. Mm-hmm. There was never like um, a quest for what worked for me. Right. It was always a running away from what I know doesn't. Gotcha. And, and now it, and now that that's shifted yeah. and I find myself in this new territory, you know, I always, I always seek out the experts, in my opinion. Right. I learn from experts. So for me, like the people in my circle without looking at Instagram and people who are renowned experts, you are the self-discipline guru in my mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. So when I text you and I was like, yeah, you know what to do? Here, <laughs> yeah. This right. is where I'm saying yeah. I don't have the answers, but I have, I'm, I'm lining up with what's true. Mm-hmm. So, um, before I've had this opportunity has presented itself to me several times Mm -hmm. to where things that were supposed to fall apart, fell apart. Yeah. And instead of me jumping at that opportunity to navigate it and take my power back and decide which direction I'd go, I'd lean on onto something else, whether it's another job similar to the one that I had that was not right or a person Mm -hmm. or, or, um, some daddy issue that I should be doing X, Y, or Z. Right. And now that it's not that way, I feel like this grand arena of choices. And for once in my life, I'm not overwhelmed. I'm waiting. Yeah. Mm. Not too long because I'm applying at places that I used to feel I wasn't worthy of. I'm not settling for, you know, what I know if I, I know what I need and it's way more than what I used to settle for. And now, and so to me, like there's this level of excitement and anticipation and waiting of the thing. Like there's interviews to be had and yeah, there's, exactly. there's things that are coming that yeah. I know are coming in work I view is worth doing. And I'm like, 
at this place where I trust myself that I'm not going to fall apart in that routine and need to escape it. Yeah. Because everything's the same Mm -hmm. every day. I want that so bad. Like I even want to buy a house. Yeah. (laughs) In this state. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. My son's going to be 22 in April. My daughter's going to be 20 in April. And I mean, we're talking five to six to seven, eight years that I could be a grandmother. You know, yeah. I would love a creek in my backyard. I yeah. love kids. Yeah, love them. I shone as a mother. Mm-hmm. I was a young one, but yeah. I was so in love with my children. Yeah, and I felt like I, I was in my place in the world raising them. It was them growing up and leaving the house that I was lost, and couldn't find any identification. So I'm glad I was someone before I became no one. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like this you know, millionaire successful in some career, I had just mastered what I thought mastered parenthood. I had some major bumps yeah. in the road, but I knew the the depth of love yeah. and the depth of putting yourself behind something. So to me, the concept was the same of success. Well, so yeah, what, what I'm saying yeah. is I was someone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then I wasn't right. But now, now that they're older and they're seeing beyond my issues when they were younger even though I think, you know, I think all kids, a little therapy might be in order. But I, I mean, like they, they are turning around again and recognizing, I believe, that level, like that feeling of love. Even my daughter texted me the other day and she, or yesterday and she was like reflecting on Christmas Eve and she's like, you make a house a home. Mm. Like I'm so, they had such a nice time. You know, they felt so loved and warm and welcome in my tiny, tiny little space. Yeah, yeah. So I had that element again. It reminded me of who I was, you yeah. know, but it meant there was so much meaning there. And what do you do after that when you feel like you had the world? I had the absolute mm-hmm. world raising them. Yeah. And what do you do? Maybe you do it again. Yeah. Kids, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. my, I keep getting pulled in that direction of working with kids. There's not a whole lot of information I have to offer them, but I have a like a vast sea of acceptance and love and nurture, you know, that you can't pay for. Yeah. And there's just a place for that. You just go where you're needed. That's right. And I'm done like placing the idea of where that is on the top of the mountain, mm-hmm. you know, like living yeah. in that space. Of, yeah. There's, I can save them all. It's not like that. Right. I feel like my place is enough, not the whole world. My place is my place, and I'm finally comfortable with yeah. finding it. Yeah. And it being enough. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful feeling, right? <laughs> you remember, you are it. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. But that's that's a huge thing to grapple with, isn't it? I think, in, even in the Bible, Jacob wrestles with an angel mm-hmm. of God, and he touches his hip and wounds his hip. Mm-hmm. And I find that interesting because it's such a structure to stand on. Yeah. You know, like yeah. You, uh, you, you're it, but but you're not. But you're not. I I you. it's, it's but right. it, not but, in a small sense. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a constant. Well, I think we'll learn that till we die. Oh yeah, absolutely. Instead of the information elevating us, it humbles us. That's the place where I'm really grateful to be. Where I'm not like, yeah. Now I'm like, wow. <laughs> I move Whoa. tears on a regular basis by seeing somebody moved by something. Yeah. You know, yeah. just having this conversation and being moved by someone's level of thought and care. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look where I go from there. How does one? No, I, I'm with you. You know, and it, it's, you know, and and how does it's so interesting too that the again think about the social constructs of the of the definition of the word success, right? What however one defines that well societally it may be, yes you need to become somebody you need to make money you need to buy a house you need to have a successful career a family etc. Oh uh, yeah, but not to the point like I well I kick rocks at right. those concepts. Well, I, and that's what I'm getting to is like. The ego it, things. Well, it's the thing is, it's like you define truly what that success means to you. For some people, it may be the, their definition of success is becoming a mother mm-hmm. and loving their kids. Like that could be all they want 
That's what they want. I now, was, I society. Was yeah. I didn't want kids. Right. And so, I wouldn't change a damn thing. Right. So, <laughs> so what's interesting is sometimes that what you don't want is exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what, you know, makes you. Uh, I, 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 again, I'm struggling with the, I'm grappling with the term your success. Anyway, your gifts though, like I grew up right. feeling in the way and a burden. Oh yeah, so yeah. Kids, I'm saying that from a 20 year old's right. perspective, thinking I have to get a babysitter because I can't yeah. do what I want to do. Yeah, exactly. That is not a true statement to say I didn't want kids. Yeah, that's the 20 year old exactly right saying I think I know right. what I want. Right. There's so much behind. There's a big state. oh for sure for sure for sure. But yeah, so the point is like you know we define we define what success is on and and again like on this at this plane this level of like having a family and being successful career that's a great thing i'm not demonizing that at all yeah I um but i'm not saying I'm, that's not the only thing no right but the problem is is like for a lot of vast majority of people that is the only thing and i that's what i realized like I, you know for years I, I wanted to become somebody i wanted to be somebody and then i realized holy shit i already am mm -hmm. i didn't need to there's that place i've touched that place within me that is that mm -hmm. and once you taste of that mm -hmm. once you awaken from that you can't really go back to sleep and be no. like pretend like hey that didn't happen that that no. wasn't a thing no once because this, you have new eyes right and that's that's what i'm saying is once the seed has been planted you can't uproot it you change and that's it. But what you know? What causes that change in a human being? Could be trauma, could be grief, could be love, could be loss of love, could be death, could be the birth of a child. So many different things. I think it's different for it's different for yeah. everybody. Yeah, there's not one. But, but something does. Like we were talking about the dark night of the soul. There's something that tears through the veneer mm -hmm. of what you thought life was, what you thought it was all about, mm -hmm. what your ego thought. The game was like this is the game, baby. I and feel then like that's like the veil that is hung over temple doors, like yeah. the sacred of sacred, where yeah. you can't go in. And that when that veil gets lifted, it's like, whoa, like holy smokes, like this, what I thought it was all about, it's not. No, Eve took and the bite. <laughs> that's like that yeah, moment. Yeah, and you were, exactly, like, yeah. and and then you realize, like it's I am whole, I am complete, no matter what societally successfully thinks i could be bagging groceries not to demonize that but i could be bagging groceries mm -hmm. and be like just completely at joy mm -hmm. with everything going on around me sometimes i wish my life was yeah. simple right yeah. that's that's your job like those may be the true sages yeah in society, <laughs> yeah. Those are the angels that yeah. we're unaware of. Yeah. The bible talks about that too. Yeah, so it's like i guess that's what i'm saying is that's kind of like the breaking through the ego structures to get to when you understand like, but again, you have to have that strong sense of self, that strong, I think, strong egoic identity at becoming somebody so you can transcend or so you can become nobody. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at in life. That to me is what's giving me all to peace. Doesn't mean you don't like the day to day shit that still bog you down. And no, of course, like, you know, I'm not floating up in the ether right all the time you can't you can't live that like you have to honor every plane like there's certain people that they'll neglect one plane for the other mm -hmm. like whether in society they will call them crazy but they may just be like really up here mm -hmm. whether it's astrally or and they're homeless and yeah, yeah exactly i understand or, that or, though yeah i totally oh, yeah. understand or people that. that are so really tied to the physical the the, the 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 tangible shit i feel like that's why i need you gotta, kids uh, if right. i didn't have them i'd probably and be that you ha person you have to uh, what is the saying you have to honor your humanity and honor your divinity when you come to that your own incarnation too. you honor your incarnation whatever that and that's a that's a whole nother topic of like you know hey i just i, I happen to be yeah, this is what this is what I got thrown into in this in this round. Let's see what I think about you know? when I want to move out of my hometown, and yeah. move out of state, and move out yeah. of the country. Yeah. Like, wait, I was born here. What? Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't mean you don't have freedom of choice at no. all. It doesn't mean, yeah. but it, but it's like I, I, I it's funny you mentioned that. For the yeah, meaning. it's it's funny yeah. you mentioned that because I was thinking about it too. It's like, what's up with this Ohio? I've, I've, 
I don't think I would have picked this from for, for right, me, but a like what's government? And yeah, like all of the atrocities that happened yeah, inside this in country this... under the facade of freedom. Yeah, like yeah. that's weird. Exactly. Like, can I just move to the Netherlands? Right. <laughs> but it's it's so interesting, like you know, getting thrown in. Like here we go in, into this world, and this is what you have. You need to honor it. The problem is a lot. So many people in life, they just push against it. Mm -hmm. They push against the natural, yeah. and it's going to eat you up. It's going it to like any anything that you turn away from is going to get you. It's going to it's going to it's going to find its way back to you. You got to start with your body though, too. Like even mm -hmm. as you were saying, yeah. that, I could feel my right shoulder start to lift up towards my ear. <laughs> like my right yeah. hand is the giving hand. Yeah. So my right arm, right side yeah. of my neck, everything is overextending. Yeah. And I have to retrain my body and muscle response and open the fascia. As you were saying that, I could feel my own body resist what you were saying. It's like <laughs> we've trained ourselves, you yeah. know, to be a certain way. And it start like for me as a yoga instructor, it's easy for me to go to the body because, I mean, the body's the temple. Like, yeah. We, it's all so connected. Like yeah. just thinking about and what I teach on a regular basis when you get really quiet with yourself and you get still and you start to pay attention to what your muscles have memorized doing and how you resist. You were talking about resisting. Mm -hmm. How you resist the natural. Yeah. It starts in your body. Absolutely. And when you start to let go and like retrain your body to re like stop resisting and lean into the discomfort of opening, like you start to notice how you've resisted things in your mind and in your heart too. Mm. They all come up at the same time. Mm. I see it in a class all the time with my students yeah i watch it and sometimes when i see someone in shavasana like in the final resting pose and they'll be like whoa tight, yeah and i'll walk behind them and like crouch behind them take a breath in and then just exhale and push down on their shoulders and i'll see their jaw <sighs> and they just let go for yeah. a second yeah i walk away and i look at them again and they're like it's it's all it starts in your body mm -hmm. like it's 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 hard yeah but resisting the natural, what mm -hmm. you were saying. I've noticed that when you start to loosen your body and you open up your body and create more flexibility in the body and yep. then you match it with strength, you start to have different eyes too because you start to see things differently. That's right. It's all connected. That's right. It's so wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like honoring who you are and, and what it is. That's what it's like. That's why it's so important to cultivate some you know, a good level of self-awareness. I think the awareness of self is, I mean, I, I, was, I was thinking about the other day, like what's a better, what's a more important skill set to, to, to have other than learning about who you are and being aware of who you are and how you make people feel. Like well, that to me is everything. Mm -hmm. But I, and then I look at other people that just like what, have such low levels of self-awareness and mm -hmm. it's like man like how does one how do you help somebody get more self-awareness how do you teach that can you teach that i don't know it's by example though. yeah more is caught than taught yeah yeah i think mother Teresa talked about that a lot when she would say if you really want to change the world go home and take care of your family yeah like the work is done in you yeah Oh yeah, that's where the that's where the change begins. But for me, that's the faith aspect, though. Yeah. If you really believe in Eastern the Eastern teachings that the outer reflects the inner, yeah. The work that is to be done has to be met with a level of faith mm -hmm. that the external will reflect the internal. Yeah. And to me, that's been my biggest um, uh, challenge of resistance is believing that. Yep. But I've had way too many experiences validate that truth for me, me. It's likewise yeah so for me i'm like at what point are you going to stop looking outside of yourself for validation of that and trust your own experience mm -hmm. whether other people validate it or not yeah it's a the huge aspect of letting go uh which is i, I don't like to use that phrase in classes because someone could be dealing with you know the death of a loved one or rape or something you don't let it go mm -hmm. it shows yeah. up until you're ready to let it go yep you know yep but what I'm saying is letting go of your need to, um, uh, letting go of, there's just a, this feeling of setting it down, mm -hmm. leaving it alone. Like let it be, mm -hmm. you leave it alone. Yeah. I, I like the term let it be then let it go. I do too. Better. Yes. Yeah, so you're leaving it, just yeah. leave it alone. It's yeah. like a wound. Leave it alone. Because you're right. Some, some of those things 
aren't ready to, like some of those <laughs> it's a weird analogy some of those hairs aren't ready to be plucked yeah, but you, <laughs> they have to fall you never can let go. that's that and that's the point especially that's when the it point. comes to trauma mm -hmm. you there's some deep suffering you don't let go you learn to live around it that's right you, you learn to live around it and you take it with you yeah and you, when you learn to live around it, you learn and you, to let the living part get bigger and bigger and bigger around. That's it. right, and you, and you can honestly let it be part of your yoga too, like as a as a method to help you. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I, I didn't choose this, but guess what? I'm gonna let this be that grist for the mill. Like, you I'm gonna stop let this internalizing the message. That's right. Yep, that's been my work mm. with yoga for sure. You come, you go to. I believe a lot of people go to spiritual practices to relieve themselves of pain. For sure. And then instead of relieving themselves of pain, they find like pure acceptance. That's exactly. the goal. Yeah. Is I, to find self the acceptance. Ultimately, I think Jack Cornfield said all, all that all spiritual work ultimately is self acceptance. Mm -hmm. And like that's come kind of talks is about what we talked about earlier is is being acceptant accepting of everything that an understanding that everything you have. Whether, whatever you were given, whatever you were blessed with, <clears throat> whatever you were, whatever has happened to you, that you accept it and that's not put and not push it away. Work. That's that's the acceptance work. Acceptance is the work, and that it, acceptance and letting it be are the simultaneous. Yeah. It's like the same thing. Letting something be is an acceptance of itself mm -hmm. because you're like, oh, it's that, and then you leave it. You you stop picking at your scab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just let it be. Let it be. Yeah. Is it the Beatles? Damn, damn geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> never been. A, I've never been a big Beatles fan in general, but like I get it. I get why. I get it. I was more of a John Lennon fan than gotcha. a Beatles fan later on when I started following yeah. his. I mean, you think about the young boys uh -huh. of the Beatles rising to fame the way that they did and then diving deep into yoga and spiritual practices, mm -hmm. coming out on the other side and then John Lennon finding Yoko Ono yeah. and then creating art for the fun of it and living right. the way they wanted to live and making a statement. I watched something recently about um, John and Yoko was being interviewed in present day and she got a little teary-eyed and she said she believes that her union with John, that the fact, the meaning of the two of them coming together was for the sole purpose of Imagine being written and released. Mm. And when you think about the message of that song, Imagine There's No Heaven, Imagine There's No Blah Blah Blah, like it's such a universal message. For sure. And for her to view the two of them and what they realized in their relationship about the world and about love and about each other and about what the gift that they offered the world was that. Like to me, I just thought that was so beautiful. Mm, yeah. So the Beatles, the Beatles were great, but yeah. I was more of an Elvis fan. Gotcha. But John Lennon was the most fascinating figure of them sure. to me. Yeah. Because a he had a son earlier in life that he didn't really have anything to do with. So the darker aspect of him, I appreciated knowing about. You know, it's the stuff that people usually hide. And then he had a son with Yoko. Yeah. Who he raised, Julian, and uh, I believe. Paul McCartney wrote Hey Jude to, or Sean, Lent. was Sean his son? You're asking, the, you're asking the so wrong guy. So he had two sons. <laughs> One was with Yoko that they okay. raised together. Yeah. Then he had a son prior to that relationship that he didn't have a lot to do with. I believe Hey Jude, Paul McCartney wrote kind of like a dig to John Lennon saying, Hey Jude, don't take it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. He was talking to John Lennon's son. Like Paul judged John for, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that story is accurate, but I remember reading about that as that being a possibility for what that meant. But anyway, we were talking about Let It Be and the yeah. Beatles. I, I <laughs> got more out of John Lennon's Imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about his song Instant Karma and Watching the Wheels Go Round? In the song Watching the Wheels Go Round, he says, people say I'm crazy living my life the way I'm living it. And he said, I'm just sitting here doing time, watching the wheels go round and round. Like, yeah, I'm doing my thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm no longer in the game is what he said. And I find that interesting. It's almost like he got a little stuck in that place of not being a part of things. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, fi I found his career after the Beatles to be a little bit fascinating. The Beatles. <laughs> How about them Beatles? That's cool. Everyone That's hated cool. Yoko. Poor Yoko. They did. She yeah. was. She, she got the. John made his own decisions. 
Oh, yeah. I think she was such a huge supporter of the things that he did. She got such a bad rap because the Beatles were on their way out. She had mm. nothing to do with their deconstruction. Yeah. It's like everyone blaming the mistress for the deconstruction oh, yeah. of yeah. a marriage. It's horseshit. <laughs> wow. Oh. Where do you go from there, Matt? <laughs> See, I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do we just stop? We almost there. I, I feel like one more little. Are we on almost in an hour? We are, what but I, it? it's yeah, yeah it's uh, time. Um, it, Keep me I, on track. I, I have a movie I, date. What time's your movie date? The movie starts at six thirty. Oh, we're good. Okay. Well, so we'll we'll do one more little. Love let's, it. Yeah, let's do that. So we we it talked be about. Or big. Let's talk about um. So we we've pretty much nailed not nailed how you even. But uh, we, we talked about ego deconstruction and, 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 and integrating mm-hmm. societally back in amongst the plebeians, <laughs> amongst you lesser than. That hurts my heart. <laughs> but it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you unenlightened herd lemmings. We're doing this for you. <laughs> you lemmings. We've already been there. We've already tasted the sweet nectar. We don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah. We've we've dined on honeydew and tasted the grapes of paradise. Have you created your own garden? Have you grown a garden? Yes, I t- and I'm tending to it every day. <laughs> every day I tend to that. Are you a what is the saying? In a garden or are you a I, in a I am a complete warrior, warrior in a garden. garden. I believe to that the utmost. You are. You giant softy. Uh, don't you don't let it get out. Um, what's the saying? Only tend to that part of the garden that you can touch. I'm not sure. I don't that know. I'm familiar with that. Tim Hale, shout out to you. A couple episodes ago, he, ago, he mentioned that. Who? Uh, Tim Hale. We talked about him before. Uh, he's on the podcast a couple episodes ago. Glasses. Oh, a person yeah. that you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, we quote Rob Goss <laughs> and Timothy Leary. Oh, and God, yeah, yeah. I'm All like, these Who's guys. This man? You've like, never oh. heard? Oh, man. <laughs> he's a wise sage, aren't, aren't you, buddy? I hope you're watching. I hope you're well. Um, but because uh, I was reflecting on this earlier about, I guess, relationships and how one, once you've done this work, you know, this in a lot of this internal work, how how that changes your views and your, I guess, uh, how you then interact in a relationship, how that changes, you know. So for you, how has that nice chair fart there? I was like <laughs> trying to rock yeah. the chair and I'm like... <laughs> I got it. So, um, a little chair ASMR. Look, yeah, oh, yeah. So, like, it, it's so funny, like how deep I'm trying to get, and she's over here making fart noises. Our roles are reversed. That, see, that's what's great. Isn't that what's great about life? Is like, you can get as fucking serious as you want, and then be as light as you want, yeah. and that's what I try to have that balance in my life because, like, I could be so fucking serious, like Same. too serious. Like I'm like, and that's why the routine has been the thing for me. Yeah, because it's like. That ever since I like I first saw Bruce Lee or I, I first got tasted martial arts, I tasted this thing that was beyond me. I was like, dude, I need. I've been I was been obsessed with like self growth, self actualization, realization, what have you. Like I've been obsessed with growing, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Like that's been my journey, and the routine has been my conduit for that mm-hmm. journey. So, anyways. I, I don't know why I went off on that, but my point is like, what? Oh, that was a good one. Uh, how has the how has your 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 views on relationship and your work inside of a relationship changed from all this? Oh gosh, so. Ugh. I know these are loaded one guys like I I mean they're I'm just throwing bombs so you just got to duck and cover <laughs> so and, and, and again oh, I have I, a lot of answers to that. I, I'm yeah just navigating them. so you know find one path to navigate on and it doesn't it that's the thing is like it doesn't have to be a, we don't need some all-inclusive let's just play we're we're playing right we're playing yeah. I think the thing that I'm going to keep circling back to in my mind, even though I have like 10 answers, is this the one, this just one aspect of 
um, so when I was by myself, it was easy and fun. Yeah. And I was the most confident. Yeah. At a point, there was a point. Yeah. Last summer mm -hmm. where I became freer than free. Mm -hmm. And it was so dangerous because I was so ungrounded in a sense that I there was nowhere to go. For me, <coughs> um, relationships keep you off the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying that's a bad place to be. It's just not somewhere to live. Yeah. It's not real. Like, not that's not realistic because you could, you know, just convert to, is it Theravada Buddhism? Mm -hmm. it, it's either Mahayana or Theravada. One of them, they're monks in the mountain. The other ones, they live on the, yeah. down here in temples and teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so I'm not saying it's impossible, yeah. but f for most of us, it's not realistic for those of us with families and responsibilities and the station we were born into. For me, relationships were always something that I was trying to get something out of needs being met and what the world taught me that relationship should be traditionally, mm -hmm. you know, um, when I was by myself, I, I really reached a mountaintop and I felt a little aimless in a sense. And I'm, I'm if we're talking about romantic relationships where you're being in romantic relationships, I think friendships are intimate too. Yeah. But mm, I think it kind of what you were saying about this, a bit of insatiable need to grow mm -hmm. in all those areas mm -hmm. that that's one a, an avenue to do it relationships and yeah. relationships are just like me the idea of having kids was right. something i was super resistant to right. relationships is also the other one hmm. and so for me it seemed the best reason to dive in yeah um i've learned so much about myself and the other thing is the really hard shitty stuff that you will never uproot on your own you will do in a relationship and if you're able to be in a safe enough space to share that with someone else and it's received well enough for it to come out the growth is individually and then you see the growth individually in the other person and then you treat the relationship as the the point that brings the two of you individually together yep. the relationship is its own entity and you take care of this because you're taking care of this, but there's a way to take care of each other to come to that point. It's like it becomes um, the mountaintop isn't that appealing anymore. Yeah. Because yeah. you're someone else is involved. Mm -hmm. You it it helps you not be an egocentric fucking asshole. <laughs> honestly. I want to get that as a t shirt. Egocentric for, for fucking me, asshole. That's good. Yeah, yeah. For me, that's what it's been for me. Yeah. Is, um, it's really easy to get lost in your own growth, in your own life, in your own oh. ideas, and the way you think life should be, and you become tense and restricted by them. Relationships, to me, help keep you flexible and grounded at the same time. And I, I feel like it's... Um, not for everyone. Like, I don't think everyone, like Ram Dass talked, you said Ram Dass talked about how it took away from his life games. I yeah. so understand that. Oh yeah. I so understand that. But it isn't until someone else touches you so deeply mm. in this really deep part of your heart that you mm. can see something greater than that life games. Mm -hmm. you, you're moved to a place of where you no longer know anything. You no longer have any answers and you are in such a place of it's not darkness in a negative sense it's a darkness of where you, you're in places that that you've never touched mm. and while you're in those places when you would normally try to deal with it or cope you have someone else someone else that you see on a on a deep level that you would never hurt on purpose yeah there's someone else. It's not about you anymore. Mm. Like it's not about you anymore. I feel like it's for me has been the one thing that I've resisted and afraid of that has been at this station of my life, whether it's 
lasts a year, 10 years, or the rest of my life until I die, it's taught me more about impermanence than anything else because relationships <coughs> will have you clinging, holding, projecting everything that you could possibly do mm -hmm. because that one person sees you and adores you and you want to feel like that forever. Yeah. So you have to step yeah. outside of yourself. And some people never come out of that no, they because don't. they expect those things to be happening for them, especially if they haven't That's right. reached that in themselves. That's right, yeah. So when you come to that place and you're able to give that to someone else, but it's it's just always this moving energy. Mm -hmm. It's always moving and you see the ball, like it's thrown and caught and thrown and caught and you see what you do to yourself affects this other person. Yeah. You see how it affects the union. Right. It's how I view it differently is in every way possible. Yeah. Every way yeah. possible. Yeah. I don't even know an answer to that. Yeah. No, that was beautiful. That's, I, I, I agree. I, I feel a lot of those things as well, that triangulation mm -hmm. towards that third thing. Cause you know, for me, it's like, I, I've, I've, I've really committed strong, serious relationships mm -hmm. And then I've had a season of isolationism. Mm -hmm. And I've grown immensely in both. The relationships, I, I found so many things out about myself that I didn't even know. Mm. And that's really what relationship is, is you're using, I can, maybe the term using isn't right, but you're, you're uh, yeah, another person. We are all using. Yes, it. valid. Yes. I mean, I well, you enter into a relationship to satisfy needs. Like yeah. I'm, I'm get, I need something from you. Mm -hmm. You're get, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of that. But then it gets really interesting when you can get beyond just that yeah. attachment to those needs. Mm -hmm. When it goes from, you know, you and I to then us, and then ultimately, the to, thing to the I way. to yeah. it. It's a union. Exactly. So I've learned so much about myself. Now, why I've been reticent to be in relationship afterwards is, you know, when you enter into a relationship with somebody, remember, you gotta, you're, you're going to swim in their grief. Mm. Are you ready to, to you know, you, you be able know to, to write? So that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. So That's where you learn about yourself. That's right. It is. It is. And I, I think a lot of people too need to do, you know, work on digesting some of the old stuff that they, that came up from previous relationships. Cause you know, some people go from one relationship to the next and they really haven't like fully worked through a lot of that but stuff. But even that's okay. But even, and, and it is, yeah. and it is. But the problem is a lot of that stuff will come up in the relationship and then cause a more rift of separateness between it two people. It doesn't if it's received well. But that's the thing, and that's why it's you have to. It actually can create a lot of it, closeness it, for sure. If it's for sure, well. if it's if it's received well, mm -hmm. if that other and and that's and how many times do you and that's how the many thing. Times do you let yourself be vulnerable? Right. You know, and that's what happens. Bringing it full circle with the ego. Yeah. You get into a relationship. It's one of the hardest things you can do because now your ego is laid bare. And it's it's going to be exposed to me, and, vul and vulnerable, say, you're and you're, and you're vulnerable. How ready are you That's right. to be seen? Yeah, because everybody wants intimacy and yes. to be seen. Yeah, but at what cost? That's right. And to me, I f I feel like I'll spend time with someone, and I'll just kind of wait for a little a while. Mm -hmm. If I'm spending a little time with someone, I'll wait for a little while to let them do their performance. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. And then once they see yeah, it's okay and I see you, mm -hmm. some people will relax and other people will go away. Yeah. So the people that relax, there's like work to be done. You know, not work to be done, yeah. but there's something happening. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something going mm -hmm. on. And for me, I feel like for the longest time in relationships, the whole thing was an act mm -hmm. and I would get so frustrated. Like there's yeah. something wrong with me for right. being able to lay bare, mm -hmm. always laying all this stuff out on the table and, and not being reciprocated. But or, then I would internalize yeah. that there's something wrong yeah. with me or it's just drama yeah. or feelings are drama. And then when it's taken, when you learn to take care of yourself and you put your shame and your guilt away and you're okay with your stuff, you get to a point where you lay it out and you don't give a fuck if they're okay with it. They either are or they yeah. aren't. And if they are fucking awesome, they're, they're show your people. Me yours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's when it becomes yeah. uh, bigger than 
your emotional responses to mm. all of it and being received or seen. You don't care if they, you care, but especially if you invest, but if, if they see you, it's like, Ooh, like it, it's yeah. cool to be seen, Yeah, but you can't, most people aren't okay with their shit. No. Like I've done some dumb shit yeah. and bad shit mm-hmm. and hurtful shit. And, but I'm not like, I don't judge myself for it anymore. Yeah. I'm like, I commend her for doing yeah. the best she could at the <laughs> she time. She did good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same, likewise. I do. I look back at yeah. myself. I'm like, you go. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. really like her. Yeah. And it's, I just, I don't look at it as a weakness anymore. I look at it as survival. Yeah. Surviving. And yeah. now it's just, when I feel <clears throat> certain ways in relationships will trigger you, you know, they trigger those primal things, mm-hmm. jealousy and insecurity oh, yeah. and you could either repress the shit out of that and let it bleed all over the place. Here's the thing that's been my line lately is, you know, you're bleeding on this, you know, like this is yeah. bleeding out so we can address the wound. Yes. Put a little salve on it, yeah. give it a hug and a kiss and then let it be, mm-hmm. leave it alone. Or you can keep picking it off. Mm. And I do that to myself in my mind. My mind loves to do that. Yeah. Like my nervous system got attached to the, to the trauma yeah because it's like oh i can keep her safe now exactly and then you get to this point where you're constantly scanning for danger and until you recognize that that's what's happening you're always going to look for danger yeah and then you finally realize the danger is always there Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily in your immediate zone and you don't have to live on alert yeah and that's that's been some work in the physical part of me because my mind's always on it yeah. I already have it figured out yeah. and I'm 10 days ahead of you, yeah. of you and me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my heart is like, please slow down. <laughs> Take an Epsom exactly. salt and eat a cookie. <laughs> 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 and my body's like, your knees, just slow down. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think as far as interfacing in relationships, um, the difference is, is there's so many. It, yeah. Because... Uh, I, I no longer am in real, am really invested in being accepted by others. I'm just really happy when it happens Mm -hmm. and I think it's cool. And I think there's stuff to to navigate and find out in those instances. I just don't give a fuck if it happens. Exactly. (laughs) But I don't mean that in a flippant or dismissive way. Sure. No, no, no. Because I want it to. Yeah. And I'm okay with that too. Yeah. I want that. And the intimacy and being seen is the scariest fucking thing in relationships. And that's been the biggest difference in how I've interfaced. Mm. Because now I'm like, hey, this is what you're getting. Yes. Like this is what it is. And if take it or leave it, it. no, but if this causes you to Exa- feel a certain yeah. way, we can discuss, how we can you talk feel, about it yeah. or you can repress it and it ain't going to work. That's right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and you don't, and you won't know. You until, have to keep putting yourself exactly, out. People exactly. People that jump from relationship to relationship get such a bad rap. They're like, yeah. oh, they can't be alone. Bullshit. <laughs> they can be alone because they see yeah. this isn't working. Yeah. You not know, not everyone. No, not no, everyone. That but that's definitely yeah. not a good thing. Right. As a general rule. Correct. I agree but, with that. But people that understand oh, that yeah. things aren't working and they're quick to let it go. Respect it. Yeah. But again, who, think, you know, who are we to rush to judgment on them anyways? We don't right, know. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying. And yeah. I, I'm sensitive to that because I've been I understood. in a lot of Understood. I'm sensitive to that. But, yeah. But I also think there's many, you know, there's two sides to a coin. Mm-hmm. I have, I loved being alone. Yeah. Like I could live like that for a very long time. <laughs> But I don't, I don't find as much satisfaction in in being on the mountain as I do in that mm. deep gritty stuff. Mm. Like there, because I love to learn. Yeah. And there's so much to learn. There's a lot of, of a lot of good shit there. To, yeah. That you can, yeah, that and you it's can hard work to through. Do. It is. Someone mentioned that to me the other day when they were talking about rejoining something that they've been wanting to mm-hmm. finish, mm. and they said that it it's it's hard, so I want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Like they just said that to me. Like it's hard. I want to do it. It isn't it isn't about flogging yourself. No. It's not a, it's not self-flatulation it's at not, all. It's not. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like it's not even a boredom where you are. It's just the next thing. Well, and again, that that talks that You for, recognize. For, right. And for uh, and once your prism has changed and you view everything that happens as like you know that that stuff to just bring you up like that's why you don't you don't you don't shy away from the the hard stuff anymore right because you know that that stuff is ultimately what's gonna help 
you get where you want to be free yourself whole whatever you want to call it so you don't push that shit away anymore right it's so interesting it's more in it's interesting like ooh, let's see what happens oh damn i fucking fell on my face i think i crashed but you know what i learned so much do you feel that liberation though is an ongoing thing and freedom it is like it's not a, it's not you a don't point. reach up fuck no you don't reach a point where oh i, feel, I did it that's a misnomer though yeah. in the spiritual community it is enlighten me enlighten no or um no samadhi being in that yeah. peaceful state yeah. it isn't a permanent one no it's every day that's right that's why the sun comes up every yeah. morning and yeah. goes down every night you are you get a chance to understand who you yeah. are every single day and that's why i think like getting up early and meditating and not getting on your phone like the things that i fail at the things that yeah. i could do better at yeah those are the things that remind you yep that the day is all you have, like right now, right. eternal now, right? That you get a chance every single day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think that's super cool. It's great, yeah. That it's not an, it's not something that you get and you hold on to and you have it forever. Yeah, that's a big lesson. Yeah, like oh, uh, the Buddha reached enlightenment, yeah. so he's forever blah blah blah. Yeah, or the Christ died yeah. and was resurrected, yeah. so he's forever a spiritual yeah. enlightened uh, being. No, to me, I feel like. I, I do believe that there are people that yes. are, are yeah. masters, you know, and guides, but I think it's a trap to think that you're, I know that because of grief and I know that because of trauma. Like I know that there's no, you don't permanently live in mm -hmm. this other, if you were, you'd be high all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd think that, that light's the only thing that exists yeah. and it isn't. Yeah. And they lock you up. And call then you a crazy stop, person. Stop being afraid of the dark. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> but you need the dark. At ten percent. Yeah, <laughs> you need that ten percent dark. No, you need fifty. No, nah. I have a listen. Light in the dark. I have a lot of dark. I have a lot of dark. We all do. But I've learned to love that dark just as much as I love the light. I've learned to accept it. The two faces of God. Yeah, exactly. And you stop black, yeah. like polarizing everything in black and white, and realize that's why yin yang moves. Yep. It's always, yeah. it's not fixed. Yeah. Oh, man. On that note. I need a cigarette. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I live for this shit. <laughs> I do. I really do. Like some of the just good conversation. Like, what's better than that? I mean, honestly. I, I really don't know. I don't. I don't. Is my love language. Like, I, yeah. And sharing it is just like. Oh, it's great. <laughs> To be able to just, well, my my whole thing is just being present with somebody and being real. I hate, that's why like you know, it's a holiday season, right? You're around people that like, yeah. you know, there's that, again, there's that facade of bullshit, but you have to like do that. The last four you Christmases to, like, I've had a pit yeah. in my stomach the two days prior. Yeah. I do. You, I you, start, ha you yeah. have to like, you know, do the, you endure the, the strut and pony show. Like, you yes. Know. And then it's like, that's why once that alcohol. bullshit's, <laughs> cut, once you cut through it. And you can get to the root, or you get to, and you look in somebody in the eyes, and you're both there. That's to me. That's that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm getting a shirt called "Egocentric Fucking." What was it? Egocentric Fucking Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> right there. I'm Just surprised like that. I remembered that. Do you ever get like so in the flow that you don't even remember what happened? Uh, I do that when I teach classes. All day, every day. People are like, what was that thing that you said? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, fucking, I don't yeah. know. It wasn't, that, it wasn't me. That's why we record these conversations, guys. Because <laughs> I don't remember. Fuck no. What was that thing you said when we were no in order two? I'm like, I don't know. No idea. But apparently you needed to hear it. Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, you're a beautiful being. <laughs> The world is so much better off with you in it. Oh my goodness. That's so sweet. But it's the truth. Ta what does that takes one to know one? Yeah. It's usually used in a negative sense. Yeah, right. But it's true. It's true. I don't say that to everyone. You know this. There's only certain people that I'm like, they're real. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They're your, the, your tribe. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I, I, I like, yes, the, my tribe. Surrounding myself with real people. Like we've said in the beginning, like just yep. picking up right where we left off. Yep. And Especially when you're such a strong individual like you and I, mm -hmm. in our own ways, mm -hmm. you know, our minds are really strong. Mm -hmm. If you want to label it as such, but we get, we focus on something. We know that if we set our mind on something, that's what's going to happen. Yep. You know, you're going to do X, Y, Z. Yep.
to me, it's like those people usually have a, a large sense of isolation and relationships sometimes are a struggle. Yeah. So when you meet people that see you and care and are just right there, you realize they're, they are your people. Yeah. Two months down the road or 10 years down the road, you know, you could call them up and you, they'd understand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I appreciate the sentiment. Yeah. And the next conversation that we have, we'll be picking up right where we just left off. <laughs> How about that for a segue? So, yeah, all right. My best friend and I, Jess, <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. do the formalities Fuck anymore. That you know what we do? Yeah. We hang up on each other. Oh, that's great. Like, we literally uh, yeah. stop talking and we just okay. hang up. We don't even say goodbye. Yeah. The other day I hung out with her. Yeah. We're, oh, we went to the immersive uh, Van Gogh okay. experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we, like, we were parked. I think... I, no, we went somewhere else because we drove together for that. I forget. We went somewhere where we drove separately and we met each other. Mm-hmm. I don't remember where it was. Aladdin's. We went to Aladdin's for lunch. And we were leaving and she parked in the front and I parked in the back. And we were walking out of the little gate of Aladdin's. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we both looked at each other. We're like, click and just <laughs> Like, it, we both just did that's it. That's great. Formality. So that's what this feels oh, like right great. now. Like, oh, this has been lovely. Okay. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> <Like>. Yeah. <laughs> So then, we'll do so, the formal so here's so here the episode. Click like and subscribe. <laughs> like subscribe. You guys know the deal. It, the episode ends now. 